Hi, I'm Nirusha Latchman, Professor of Anatomy and Chair of the Department of Clinical Anatomy here at Mayo Clinic. In the December edition of ASJ, under the lead authorship of Dr. Sebastian Codafana, we published an interesting paper looking at the superior and inferior labial arteries in terms of the anatomy as we investigated this using ultrasound-guided uh, imaging. This is an extension of a previous study that was published by Dr. Kodafana and team that looked at the variations of the superior and inferior labial arteries from an anatomical standpoint. And it is well known that the artery can have one of three positions. Either it would be between the orbicularis oris muscle and the oral mucosa, or it could take an intramuscular route and it goes through the uh, fibers of the orbicularis oris muscle, or it could maintain a superficial location that is above the orbicularis oris muscle but deep to the cutaneous aspect of the uh, lip. In this particular study, we focused on the varying anatomical positions of the superior and inferior labial artery using an, a landmark which you're all familiar with, which is the vermilion border. Now the vermilion border forms that line of separation between the cutaneous lip and the red lip. And what we found in the study was that the superior and inferior labial arteries are indeed contained within the red lip and tend to lie below the vermilion border. And this is especially true in the midline because in 100% of the time, in 100% of cases, the artery was found within the red lip. It is also true that in high percentage, about 80% of the time, on the lateral aspect of the lip, the artery is lying within the red lip. I know Dr. Kodafana is looking forward to further studies because using this kind of anatomical information could actually enhance lip volumizing procedures, whereas in the past, we normally use a horizontal approach for these procedures. Perhaps using the knowledge of this anatomy to redirect those procedures, maybe approaching the lip from a perpendicular plane so as to know where the artery is, understanding the safe areas, and then injecting from a cranial caudal or caudal cranial location might actually be better in terms of efficacy and safety for the patient. So I'm going to take this opportunity again to thank ASJ for their interest and support of our publication, for my co-authors, and once again for Dr. Kodafana's leadership. Thank you so much.